On April the 29th, 2023, the Papal Basilica of St. Paul Outside the Walls bore witness to an extraordinary concert, The Dream of Gerontius, the masterpiece of the English composer Edward Elgar, based on a poem by St. John Henry Newman. In 1889, Elgar received Newman's text, a bestseller of that time, as a wedding gift. After eight years of assiduous and deep reading, the composer decided to give melodic form and substance to the events narrated in the poem. The Dream of Gerontius is a wonderful piece of eschatology. We know that Gerontius means just an old man, a man who is dying, and in the poem, Newman describes what happens when Gerontius dies, how the priest accompanies him, prays, and other people pray, and then he passes away, and then the soul begins the turning towards God. And this is just magnificent, how Newman was able to make out of that a poem, imagining how the guardian angel would help that soul to find the right way, how the soul would be challenged he said by, by demons even, how angels would help and accompany at the soul. And then at the end, the soul arrives before God and is then judged in one instant. And then the soul realizes that the soul is not yet ready to contemplate God in his glory and in his holiness. And then is so to say released in the purgatory, has to be purified, to be able then really to contemplate God in his holiness and love. The Oratorio, The Dream of Gerontius, would mark a point of encounter between two central figures of the artistic, cultural, and religious life of Great Britain of the end of the 19th century. Edward Elgar, son of a Protestant father and Catholic mother, received a Catholic education. For his part, John Henry Newman was an Anglican priest who, after years of discernment, ended up converting to Catholicism. John Henry Newman is a saint now. He has been canonized by Pope Francis uh, about four years ago. And we all know that he <clears throat> was an Anglican and a great, very well-known professor in Oxford and tried to renew the Church of England. And then, by God's providence, was led into the Catholic Church. And in the church, he also tried to contribute to the building up of the Catholic Church of Fall in England and uh, wrote wonderful uh, books uh, and was really a great pastor. I would say a man who foresaw our times, above all the difficulties in faith that we, we would have to challenge. And he tried to respond by a strong faith, by really a great capacity of theology and by his really uh, immense love for souls. With this concert, the organizers wished to emphasize the message of ecumenism and dialogue contained within the musical composition, The Dream of Gerontius. And for this extraordinary occasion, they counted on the participation of the British Parliament Choir. There will be a number of members of both Houses of Parliament, so both the House of Lords and the House of Commons. But then what's wonderful about this is that it's not just our parliamentarians, it's also uh, everyone that works within the parliamentary complex can be a part of the choir, which is, I mean, you wouldn't want 300 MPs to come and sing to you, because I'm not sure that enough of them can sing. Um, so they will be here. And I think this is a really good moment for us in the United Kingdom to be thinking about the importance of music. Because of course next week is the King's coronation and already there is great excitement including about the music that will be performed during that ceremony. And that ceremony is about the, 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 the very essence of the state which I represent here and the King who I represent here. And so you're absolutely right, music brings us all together and allows us to receive a sort of almost a spiritual uplifting. Uh, and that's what I hope that our guests here tonight will get from this extraordinary poem by St. John Henry Newman and this extraordinary music by Edward Elgar.
The dream of Gerontius is presented to the world as the perfect synthesis of the splendor of the English Catholic culture from the last third of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century.